Listen close, fellas. You want to get your wife's motor running? You want to show her you're a real man? Then you need some real cool tools. Oh, yes. Ready? Stop what? kidding yourself. What? We did not start off that way. Yeah, I wasn't always this cool. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You are watching Tubes Time and I'm Cody. And I'm Jesse. And this is video number three in our crazy things we've done with Zero Experience series. We released a video on how we built a wedding venue with no experience and how we built our home with absolutely no experience with our hands. <laughs> this video here is going to be talking to you guys a little bit about how we started a woodworking business with zero experience. So let's jump in. As you guys saw in that little intro that we did, I did show a little bit of the equipment that I use for woodworking, but believe it or not, we did not always have all that equipment. What was the very first woodworking tool that we ever purchased, babe? Uh, I don't know about we. I was actually <laughs> the first one to get into woodworking working yes believe it or not it was a chop saw because yeah. i wanted to build picture frames <laughs> i was still working offshore at the time and she told me that she wanted to start working on some picture frames she started seeing this shabby chic country rustic style coming in and she was like hey i can do that i'm bored whenever you're gone and i'm off of work so i want to get into this mm -hmm. so we went to lowe's and bought her a hitachi chop saw yes and we kind of learned it together because yeah. neither one of us had done a whole lot with that kind of stuff did I, but did, did i even ever build a picture frame first thing we ever built and we did this together whenever i was home because she was scared to learn how to use the tool yeah. without me there we built some tv trays simple boxes that you would sit in your lap and put your food on and i actually watch have TV one on our, my island today here's our island and here is the first thing we ever built <laughs> the first whitewashing job we ever did either paint job after that in our old house we wanted something that went by the door that we can hang up keys and hang up coats and things yeah like that and also put our mail in so we built this cool little shelf that was all completely our idea and our custom design and we had it hanging up in our old house for years and yeah. even those two little things that is a far cry from a woodworking business right so how on earth did we go from never even owning any tools really to our woodworking business what was our motivation I would say it is when we were opening the venue and we decided that we could do anything. That, that's kind of our personality, if you haven't realized yet. <laughs> if it saves us money, we're probably going to do it. We're willing so. to at least <laughs> attempt it. We needed some seating. We needed some tables for people to sit at. And we also needed some outdoor seating, some benches. And what we didn't like is that most all of the venues we had ever been to, their seating and their tables were flip-up tables. Usually nice chairs that went around these flip-up tables. But the tables always had to have tablecloths and be fully decked out and decorated in order to look pretty so we wanted something that matched the more rustic farmhouse feel of our mm -hmm. venue so we built these really nice tables at least I thought they were super nice at the time now I look at them and just see that they were very simple and newbie woodworking but everyone that comes in loves them mainly because of the paint job that we slapped on them and yeah. we learned so much building those tables we had to build outdoor bench seating so we built 32 benches for outdoor seating very pretty pew type With benches. Yeah, them. yeah. Yep. I was pictures. still working offshore at the time as well. So when I was offshore, I was designing the builds because another thing I don't like to use other people's designs everything that we build is our complete custom own design mm -hmm. so I would spend time in my bunk whenever I wasn't in the ROV shack doing my job designing tables and benches while he was there and had already come up with however we were gonna do it I was in the shop making cuts where he could put it all together when he got back we would be working on these projects together whenever I was home and whenever I would go offshore I'd be like okay so this is what else we need to complete this build and I would leave her with this cut list and she would come home after working her butt off all day at the nuke plant and she would be making cuts with the chop saw so that I would have parts whenever I came home to start putting together and making our tables and benches. It was 32 ceremony benches and 19 farmhouse tables. 30, 36 benches 36 that went benches. around those tables. Yeah so a lot of furniture so that's really when we gained a lot of experience. We didn't really know that there was a lot of 
interest in those things. We kind of had the attitude that if people wanted a farmhouse table for their house, they were probably building it themselves. When people started coming out to the venue for weddings, still to this day, we are shocked at how many people ask us, will you sell us one of these tables? What other stuff do you make? I absolutely love this paint job. People do not have the time. They don't care to learn how to do it themselves. They're willing to pay for it. I am completely humbled by that because I look at it with all the experience I have and how far I've come. I look at those tables and I'm like, I'll build you something like that, but I'm not building something that's that rustic and ugly anymore, you know? <laughs> I'll, build, I'll build something that's built a whole lot better than that, that looks a lot like it, but has the same paint job and stuff. And they're usually like, oh yeah, that sounds great, but people that don't have any experience with woodwork know no difference. They just see something that looks really pretty and they're like, I want that. So we took the compliments and it made us feel really good about ourselves, but we still didn't start selling woodwork because we just felt completely overwhelmed with all mm -hmm. the other things that I had to build because the venue just wasn't even close to being the vision that we had. Yeah, yet, and I was so. still working at the nuclear plant. I had a chemistry degree, so I was a chemist there. And so Cody just had a lot on his plate, so there was no way that he had time to build anybody anything. Couldn't build <laughs> stuff for other people because we needed stuff still for yeah. the venue. Yeah, and so. we really didn't have that vision for ourselves yet either. You know, we were starting a new business. It wasn't time for that. Something else, right whenever the venue opened, I had to build a really long custom vanity for the bridal suite. We encased our beams in the bridal suite suite ourselves, which turned out to be a similar technique to what we did whenever we built our house for the beams inside of our house. Project after project and you just start learning a lot. A couple years after the venue was built, still haven't sold any woodwork to this point, we decided we were going to go ahead and start construction on our home. It was time for us to start working on the kitchen and ultimately we decided that we wanted a French style of decor, which is a lot of ornate patterns and things. That this is my vision, you do it. <laughs> the first thing that I did when she showed me that is I went and bought a Dremel tool. No, he went and cried in the bathroom first. <laughs> I can't meet her expectations. <laughs> I went and bought a Dremel tool and some wood carving bits and I started trying to learn to carve by hand and I realized that our kitchen cabinets would be done in the year 2030 if I did it that way. We started looking into a CNC machine and I was like, hey babe, um, hey babe. we could buy <laughs> this CNC machine <laughs> and what I could do is design whatever I want in the program and it will carve carve these really ornate patterns and I can use those panels and install them into the cabinet doors and things and really make our kitchen and every piece of furniture in our house look super fancy just like you're wanting. Yeah, and that and sounded really great. It was like, yeah, babe, okay, we'll spend $20,000 on that as long as you can make some money with it because I am so frugal. There's no way. I would have been like, that's fine. Just build me some cabinets <laughs> that look like a country shack. I don't care. <laughs> Just to be clear, she does care. But now you're going to be doing this for some money. <laughs> Which I was fine with because we never like having our eggs all in one basket. Yeah. We knew that we wanted to eventually start a woodworking business and I was like, look, let's go ahead and do this. I can make science for people I can make fancy furniture yeah. for people and we can start making some extra money but first I wanted to use the machine all the time to as quickly as possible get done with our house and mm -hmm. everything that we wanted to yeah. make for our house so that was also going to be all of the trial and error that I needed to feel confident to sell a product. So we had lots of trial and error while building our kitchen and yeah. all of our vanities um, and things. So what really made us order the CNC though was I really like very ornate doors, like lighting doors in your home, old antique doors that we just could not afford. Like I'm literally talking some of these doors you'll find are five, $6,000 because they're antiques. And we saw that there was no one replicating them, like building them and selling them for sale. There's a ton of like barn sliding doors, very country, farmhouse. I wanted French. We're from Louisiana and that's just really what I love. We were like, okay, well we see a need and so we're going to learn to create it, which we had never done anything like it before. Mm -hmm. So he was going to use however many doors we have in our house as a test run to start really building them and perfecting them before we ever put up any for sale. To this day, I am still adding things to our house, but for the most part, we got m most of the work done that we needed to get done 
done on our house where everything that we added from that point out would just be something that we wanted and not something that we necessarily needed. I now had time to start working on designing things that we could sell on Etsy and sell locally. So we first started with Jesse would actually help design signs on Photoshop and send them to me then I would have to put them in the program for my CNC machine and convert them into files that I could use to actually carve signs and that's how we first started getting into woodwork and then I started advertising a little bit that I did custom woodwork and yeah. people started ordering things from me like uh, vanities for instance which is something that I built a few of those then we really wanted to start getting into advertising our doors and that was something that that again was the main reason we bought the CNC machine because she really thought that would be profitable. Mm -hmm. Building a door isn't super straightforward. There is a lot of trial and error, especially the style of doors that I wanted to build. Basically, I went through different evolutions of the door construction, not even anything to do with design, yeah. but it's just the construction of the door. So I won't get into super detail, but we settled with a construction design that holds together and I can put these gorgeous carvings in it. Now we're selling them on Etsy. They're yeah. easier for us to sell locally. Cody likes to install things. It costs a lot of money to yeah. ship too so you have to tack on like eight nine hundred dollars to a price just to get it shipped. We've had some people order some from the northern states and we've had them order from the coastal states mm -hmm. and it just costs a lot of money to get things shipped out there but no one else is building what I build the way I build it yeah. so it is really a good niche Unique. market that we found. Yeah. In the meantime of building doors he's also created some really cool things that that I feel like are just unique and the CNC has made them even more to our taste and what we are going for our woodworking business in the French country style. You can see like towel holders that he built for both our bathrooms that go on the wall. They're just really awesome. And then he's actually in the process of right now building a jewelry box thing that goes on the wall for me for my birthday. And all those things are things that he can sell. He really does like custom work and that's kind of where our woodworking business has made a good source of money so far. It hasn't totally been just selling doors. One it's a lot thing. of word of mouth. You build yeah. a vanity for someone and then someone else wants yeah. one. And then other people are like, oh, he can build that. You know, what all does he build? Give me your ideas <laughs> yeah. and I'll do my best to come up with something mm -hmm. that matches what you have in your head. Yeah. And that's what I do for for us. So in our house, almost everything we have are these custom built-ins. Yeah. So that really teaches you to think outside of the box because I don't use plans for anything that I build. Whenever you start thinking that way, when someone wants a custom project from you, your mindset is already there. So you can really make customers happy by doing things that no one else is doing. Not a lot of people around here are doing things that are completely custom and completely one-of-a-kind projects. If you have a vision to get into woodworking, it's definitely possible with zero experience. What your business ends up being might not be what that vision looked like at the very beginning. You kind of grow and you realize, oh, I'm really good at building this, um, but I might be really good at building this, but it doesn't sell. There's just all, all right. sorts of factors that go into it. We're still learning from it, <laughs> still growing. We haven't had the time to really put into it as much as if you wanted to make a full income from a woodworking business ours has not been that way. It's been, oh, this is extra income, side money. It definitely has the potential and could take over a lot of our income. You just have to have the time to put into it and yes. we have not allotted that yet. The word is getting out and I'm getting calls all the time that I yeah. literally have to just turn down because I'm like, sorry, I've got this other project I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Being someone that someone needs like that is what's okay. going to yeah. keep people coming to you. Yeah. So if you're wondering, well, how do I start off making money advertising my products? I would definitely say one of the most affordable routes to start with is like an Etsy shop, whereas not investing into your own website. E-commerce can be quite expensive and intimidating in the beginning. We aren't even there yet. We plan on doing that pretty soon for custom orders and things like that. We would like our own website, but Etsy and honestly, Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, social mm -hmm. media, Instagram is really where advertising is now for almost all businesses. And what's so nice about it is you actually
actually get to select your audience. And this is something I've learned with the venue and going forward with any business, this is where I think you need to be advertising. You literally select demographics, you select the type of people, like you can literally say, hey, Facebook, make sure to put this ad in front of somebody who's been looking at vanities or who has been looking yeah. at doors. So that increases your sales. So I would definitely start there. And then another this. cool thing is that people are always on social media. So when mm -hmm. that ad gets slapped in front of them and they click on it, they're going to be taken to your page where you're always uploading your latest yeah. projects. Yeah, I hate social media, but for business, it's absolutely necessary. Well, that is it for this video, you guys. I hope if you are looking at opening your own business that this is just one more encouragement because we do seem to open quite a bit of different businesses. With no experience, it's kind of our thing. Leave any comments or questions you might have that we didn't answer in the video. We're kind of an open book. We do like hearing from you guys and responding to you guys' questions. If you are curious of where you can find our custom woodwork, the link is in the description. I think it says merch on top of it because we also sell our hats and stuff there. Mm -hmm. That is by no means even close to all the stuff that I do. If you have a custom yeah. project you would like me to work on, just hit us up via yeah. email, via Yes, get Facebook, on our wherever. email list. Hit the link in the description and sign up for our email list. You never know what type of woodworking thing that we're building next that we can share with you guys. We will always notify our email list first. God bless y'all. <laughs> we will see you on the next one. Bye.